It's only just the beginning of April, which means it is time for my March reading roundup. I cannot believe it, I am actually sort of on time this month. Last month I sort of skipped the beginning of the month as though it didn't really exist, but this time I think that I have done much better. So here it is, my March reading roundup, and in no particular order, though I think that the last book is the last book because of its sheer size. So I started the month almost with Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I was really looking forward to this and this is actually one of my 24 for 24. There are actually a few of those on this list through no intent, just I picked them off the shelf at that particular moment. So this is the story of Brie Matthews and after her mother dies she discovers that she sees things a little bit differently. It is an Arthurian legend with a lot of um, native or African American history. And I really wish there had been so much more of that because this book had incredible potential. Brie was a fantastic character, well rounded, and I really wanted to get to know far more about her. Unfortunately, the way that certain things were told, I felt that there was an opportunity that was slightly missed. I have got blood marked on my list, though it's not one of my 24. And I intend to read that purely to find out if the story that is built in this one gets even better in the second. So that's my first book of this month, Legend Born. Next was Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. Yep, a Christmas book. I am equal opportunity. And to be honest, the English weather hasn't exactly been conducive to thinking spring thoughts. So <laughs> reading a book based around Christmas was actually kind of appropriate I think. The one thing I will say about this as much as I enjoyed Melody and Beat's story the name just got me. I think I don't know if it's a, um, a my generation thing or anything else but who names their kid Beat? Um, the story could have been based at any time of year. I don't think it was specifically it specifically needed to be Christmas but it was an okay, cutesy sort of tale. And then you get to the bedroom scenes and I'm like, okay, I didn't need to know that much about this character's particular preferences. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was okay. It wasn't my favourite by Tessa Bailey, which actually is It Happened One Summer. So yeah, that's another one for this year. It <laughs> wrecked the halls. Third on my list was another of my 24 for 24, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is the first in her Wayfarer series and so many people had recommended this to me. I've lost count of the number of people who said, oh, you've got to get this book. So I bought the first three and the novella and obviously the fourth one is on my wish list somewhere, I think. I enjoyed this, though I was kind of confused at what the intent of the story was. I enjoyed the relationships. I thought they were very well done and I liked the interspecies thing. I thought, I felt that it was written incredibly well and her characters were so well developed. Every single one of them had unique traits. You could identify them very easily. And yeah, it was well written, but I was still a bit perplexed because their story ends with this one which is a little bit confusing for me. Next on my list was actually my book for March's Agatha Christie read along, which is hosted over on Instagram. And that is The Mystery of the Blue Train. I enjoy Agatha Christie. I think that she is 100% the queen of mysteries and cozy mysteries in general. However, this book, and she admitted it herself, was not her strongest. It's one of her earlier books written in the 1920s. And for anybody who knows, she started writing in the late 19 teens and um, her first novel was published in 1920. So this one is an early Poirot. And anyone who knows me knows he is my favorite of her detectives. 
Unfortunately, this feels like it's a melding of other stories that she has written so much better. Um, Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, both of these kind of have their inspiration in the mystery on the blue train, but it's not quite as strong as I'd like it to be. And I found the mystery itself was a little bit annoying, I think, is probably the best word. So not her best, but by far not her worst either. Next book was A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. This is the proof copy. I actually won an arc through book break. Um, I read, it took me five months, I think, to get around to reading this book. It's been on my shelf since October and I did a full podcast episode on it, which I will link in the info description below. However, this was, it was marketed as Peaky Blinders meets Six of Crows. Uh, I've never seen Peaky Blinders, but I absolutely love Six of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I think it is by far her best book in the Grisha verse. Unfortunately, this feels almost like a weaker carbon copy of that particular novel. And I didn't enjoy the characters, though Jin is quite nice. The main character is Arthur's, Arthur's younger brother sort of. Um, I found he was by far the most charismatic character. Unfortunately, it just didn't cut it for me. And this is one that I will be passing on to somebody else. Next book was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune. This is another of my 24 for 24. And I loved it. It took me a couple of days to process after reading it. So I didn't read for a few days following finishing this book. That said, it was still only a four star novel. I enjoyed the characters. I loved the setting. I found it as light and whimsical and yet still as moving as The House in the Cerulean Sea. And I'm still looking forward to beyond Somewhere Beyond the Sea, which comes out in September. But I'm not sure. Yeah, this isn't this isn't my favourite by him but I still enjoyed it greatly. And as I said, it was a four star read for me. So, and I would still absolutely 100% recommend it to other people. Miss Austin Investigates was the next one on the list by Jessica Bell, uh, Jessica Bull, sorry. And this was fun. It was lighthearted. It was funny. It also didn't make, uh, quite often you'll read a book and the main character in this case, Jane Austen, will be this erudite and enchanting and charming character who never steps a foot wrong. Oh boy, that is not Jane Austen in this book. She constantly makes social faux pas. She is rude to people. She opens her mouth when she probably shouldn't. She makes assumptions and accusations and quite often will get it wrong. And I found that incredibly charming. This is the first in a series. The second one is actually mentioned at the back of the book. Um, I'm going to quickly take a look so I don't get the title incredibly wrong. The next book is going to be Miss Austin and the Foreign Princess. And it already looks intriguing. So this one I would recommend, especially if you love something based in the Regency era with all of the um, societal norms that go with that. I would definitely recommend it. And it is cozy crime. So it had it fit every single little box that I wanted it to. Yeah, it, this ticked quite a few boxes for me. Otherworldly by F.T. Lukens. I got sent this by Simon and Schuster. Thank you very much. And I interviewed the author F.T. Lukens, and that is my most recent podcast episode. And it's also a video interview. It was wonderful to talk with them about this book, about everything that went into creating the characters and the story surrounding it. It is, um, it is fantasy. It is mythology. It is eco because there is mention of the environment and the damage that is being done but it's also a beautiful story of growth and love between the two main characters Ellery and Knox highly recommended it is YA fantasy and I'm not one that re this is quite it's not I wouldn't say it's young YA fantasy but it's not quite the same YA fantasy as you'll come across in other instances that I have read however i really enjoyed this and this is the first novel by F.T. Lukens I've read and I will definitely be searching out more of them. This actually comes out on the 2nd of April. 
so today as I'm recording. The next book is The Antique Hunter's Guide to Murder by C.L. Miller. This is another cosy style mystery based in the antique world. So it was written by the daughter of two antique experts. And it is very deeply embedded in the search for antiques that probably shouldn't be let out of their countries. It involves a mystery that took place 20 years prior to the novel and also the solving of the murder of our main character, Freya's antiques advisor. Enjoyable book. I read this for a book tour with Random Things. And this, as you can see, is the proof. The final copy is looks slightly different to this. But this is another, probably, I'd say 3.75 to 4 star book especially if you love cosy crime and you like antiques and the mystery surrounding them. The next book is probably my least favourite book of this month and that makes me sad because it is a beautiful book. It is a fairy loot. This one is fairy loot anyway. This is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez and this is another of my 24th 24. I said there are quite a few of those on this list this month. Um, this is marketed as The Mummy. 1999. If you love The Mummy 1999, you'll love this. Um, no, sorry, you won't. This book um, is about Inez, whose parents are um, there. And I'd say anthrop anthropologists or archaeologists who spend a lot of their time working in Egypt while she lives in Argentina. And she receives a letter one day while she's living with her, her aunt and her cousins stating that her parents have died. So she heads off, runs away from her family and in Buenos Aires to Egypt, to Cairo, and finds a mystery is there, especially surrounding what happened, actually happened to her mum and dad. Um, there is a very strange magical system involved in this book. It didn't ever become very clear and sadly, as excited as I was about this book, I was as quick to put it on my unhaul shelf as I was to take it off my reading shelf when I decided I was going to read it. So yeah, this was a very weak two stars for me and it was so disappointing because as you can see, it is an absolutely stunning edition, be a great great thing on my look at to look at on my shelf but I am of the mind now that if I don't want to read it again or I know I won't read it again it goes straight on the unhauled shelf and I will slowly find it a new home so that was What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. <sighs> Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland was another book that I received and I participated in a book tour with Black Crow PR this was incredible, especially if you find um, early English history, and I'm not talking um, the Tudors or the Regency, I'm talking post-Roman invasion. So post-Roman invasion, pre-Norman invasion history, and it is intriguing. It's the story of Queen Athelberg and King Ine, King Ine of Wessex uh, when the country was separated into different kingdoms and it also ties in a lot of um, I'd say probably early Celtic Welsh mythology. It is fascinating, a really good read and I would highly recommend it if you like that particular era of history. It sent me down so many rabbit holes. I think I spent about four hours searching through old history books that I've got on my shelf, through history history texts online, and through, <laughs> I ended up going through family trees and things to find out where they'd ended up. And it turns out that though it's not covered in this book, both Athelberg and Ein died in Rome, though they spent most of their life as reigning monarchs of Wessex. So that is Song of the Huntress. My final book and the final read of March is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This was my one five-star read of March. So many people, again, had recommended this to me and I'd actually purchased it in hardback. I think I purchased it on Vinted. 
because I couldn't have hardback of Empire of the Damned without having a hardback of this one. So I um, went hunting and found myself a copy. This book is, I'd recommend, if you haven't read it and you like incredibly deep high fantasy world building, you will really enjoy this. But I would recommend you do a lot of wrist strengthening exercises before you start reading it. I The only time I put this down over the two and a half days it took me to read it was when I was giving my wrists a rest because it was so heavy. But I highly enjoyed it, highly recommend it. The characters, uh, Jean-Francois and Gabriel, are incredibly well created and written and the back the past Gabriel's past if you don't know this is essentially Gabriel is telling his story to his vampire captive Jean uh, Jean Francois um and it is so well done I enjoyed the background of his story but I also enjoyed the history of his people which this does go into in quite some depth so if you haven't read it and you enjoy books that are very have an incredible world structure this is definitely one I would recommend as I said this was my only five star of the month and book number 12 on my list of books I read in March have you read any of these books would you recommend any of these to anybody else would you recommend me anything by any of these authors or by someone you haven't seen that I've read a book by yet I would absolutely love to know and in the meantime thank you so much for joining me and like comment and subscribe thank you mm -hmm.